Hello and welcome to polyphase systems. Specifically, we're going to begin talking about three-phase systems. This is covered in Chapter 9 in the AC Electrical Circuit Analysis text. So polyphase basically means that we have more than one phase, more than one source, if you will, to drive a load. And the load itself consists of several of these individual phases or parts. We use the Greek letter phi to indicate phase. Three phase is clearly the most widely used for uh, reasons of efficiency. Although technically, theoretically, you could use two-phase or five-phase or something like that, but three-phase works out to be uh, very effective from a, from a cost and performance aspect. Here's the basic idea. Instead of um, just having a single source driving a load, in other words, instead of just having our simple sine wave coming along like this, we actually give this sort of multiple pushes, if you want to think of it that way. Um, instead of thinking in terms of, uh, I'll just use my fingers here, of see the positive and the negative parts as being pushes, right, into the load, what we're going to do is have multiples. So it's going to be more like say using three fingers and the result will be much greater output and much smoother application of that power. So what we're going to do is evenly space two more sine waves in here. So it's 360 degrees for one cycle. So we're going to space these out by 120 degrees. All right, there's 180, so 120 is about here. And that comes back like so. And then another one <clears throat> at 120. Let's extend this out a little bit more so we can see it a little better. And then another one, like I said, that's will be an, uh, another 120 from this. In other words, 240 from the total. So that's going to come up and look something like this. All right, and so on and so forth. Extending out. Now you can draw this rather nicely in a uh, sort of like a phaser diagram, if you will. We could do this. And we'll just say that our first phase is this guy right there, whatever that amplitude happens to be. And then our Second phase would be 120 degrees out from that, so that would be sitting out like this. All right, so here's your 120 degrees. And then 120 degrees off of that, we have the third phase. All right, so that's 120 degrees there. And then obviously 120 degrees back there. All right, so that's, this is what we're doing. All right, this is our polyphase system. Now, we can set these up both the generator and the load in either what's known as a delta or a y configuration. Sometimes we spell out the letter y, w-y-e, but I just like to use y. So the Greek letter delta, in other words like a triangle, or a y, sometimes also called a t, depending on how you uh, set this up. Right? Very often these are drawn sort of upside down, um, but you know just the way it's laid out, there's going to be three points, and how do we want to set those up? In other words, do I have the three points and a delta configuration, so there's you know things like this, or do I have the three points set up like that? All right, so here's your delta, there's your y, okay? All right, um, because we have the options of delta and y connections, there's four possibilities. We can have a a Y source with a Y load, we can have a Y source with a delta load, we can have a delta source with a delta load, delta source with a Y load. What I want to look at in this video are 
Y loads. In other words, we'll look at the uh, Y generator and a delta generator, but the loads will be Y connected loads like this. And these are going to be balanced loads. So what's a balanced load? Balanced load just means that the three legs of the load are identical. One of the nice things about having a balanced load as far as the analytical part of it is you really only have to analyze one of the three legs and then the total is just three times that because you have three identical legs. So here's what we're looking at as an example. I'm going to start off with YY which I think is the uh, most obvious way of doing this. So we start off with a generator and usually we draw uh, like a coil sort of affair to represent the coils of you know, a physical generator. All right? So we have three of these and they're just wound in such a way that the, the signals generated by them are 120 degrees out of phase. So I'm just going to call this the A connection, the B connection, and the C connection. Now I have a load. Like I said, this is going to be a Y connected load and this is going to be a complex impedance. So I'm just going to draw a little resistor and an inductor here for each one of these legs. Now, for example, this could be uh, like, you know, a motor for something, you know, like maybe uh, a lathe or something along that line. And I'll label these A prime, B prime, and C prime so we can sort of distinguish them. Now, the way we're going to connect this up is that we're going to go from A to A, B to, you know, B to B, C to C, and we wind up with this sort of connection. All right. This we would refer to as a phase rotation. The phase rotation would look like this. And this the way I've I've drawn it here. If you swap these wires around, like if you connected A to B prime and B to C prime and C to A prime, then these two things will be out of sync. Um, that may or may not be a problem depending on the application. Um, if it's just a simple motor sort of application, that generally wouldn't be an issue. But if you swap two of them, in other words, if you connected A to A prime and B to B prime, uh, excuse me, B to C prime and C to B prime, right, like out like this and like this, and you had something like a motor, the motor would wind up spinning backwards because your phase rotation would be opposite from what we've drawn here, all right? Yeah, you probably don't want that, okay? Um, all right, so let's take a look at a load. I'm just going to say that the load that we have over here, we have a, a load impedance. We'll keep it easy. We'll say that these two pieces are the same size. The real and the imaginary, we'll just say it's 10 at an angle of 45 degrees. And as far as the generator over here is concerned, um, we're just going to say that this is a, a standard 120 volt, you know, North America kind of thing. Now, we have to be very specific about various sorts of voltages and currents, as you'll see. In this particular uh, layout, it is possible to connect the center pieces. In other words, this neutral, this common. So that's a four-wire connection. Um, other systems are three-wire connections. And I, I like to draw it on the YY just because it makes things in an introductory level a little bit more obvious. Right? So what we have to define first is something called the generator phase current. Right? That would be this. Generator phase current. And we have uh, something referred to as the line current. That's literally connecting from A to A prime. And then, of course, there is the actual load current, right? The thing that's going through these. And we would call that the load phase current. Now we know everything is defined appropriately, all right? Now, an interesting question is what is the voltage from, let's say, A to B, or from B to C, or from C to A? On our schematic back here, our little, our little um, uh, phasor diagram, that's basically from here to here, all right? So this distance we refer to as the line voltage, right? It's from one of these connection lines to another. 
Now, it turns out that this is a fixed ratio. It is the ratio of square root of 3, which is approximately equal to 1.732. All right? So in other words, whatever we have for a generator phase voltage, the voltage from one line to another, A to B, right, B to C, C to A, would in fact be the square root of 3 times that. And of course, the phases would just rotate out 120 degrees. So if that was um, you know, angle 0, that's what angle 120, that's angle 240, or, or minus 120 if you prefer. But the magnitudes of these things as they go around, they go up by uh, the square root of 3. So if we were to start with, as I said, uh, a standard 120 volt North America, if I said um, the phase voltage, the generator phase voltage, is 120 volts, right? What we're saying is that's the voltage out here, right? That's this little piece. So if that's the case, then the line voltage from here to here would have to be square root of 3 times that, right? In other words, it's the phase voltage times square root of 3. And if you multiply that up, 120 times square root of 3, you get 208 volts, right? So that's a very common three phase uh, line voltage that we would see, all right? So load phase in this configuration is also 120 degrees. And it's kind of obvious in this picture using the neutral, right? This voltage and this voltage have to be the same. So the load phase voltage, right, from here to here, in this configuration, y to y, has to equal the generator phase, which would be the 120 volts. All right, so far so good. All right, now the question is, what about the currents? Well, in this particular configuration, the current being produced by the generator, the current in the line, and the current in the load are all the same, right? We can just almost look at this as a little series loop. Just ha so happens that there's three of them sort of interconnected. But we can just look at that as like one little loop, right? So the load current equals the line current equals the generator phase current. Well, what is that current? We can see right back here, I have a known voltage of 120 volts, right? The load phase voltage sitting across this impedance of uh, 10 at an angle of 45. So that would have to equal, and I'm going to forego putting an angle on here because we understand that there's going to be three of them, right? So it's going to be 120 volts divided by 10 at an angle of 45 degrees. So if we just started off with the first one at zero, all right, when you divide that out, you're going to get 12 at minus 45. And then the other two obviously go out 120 and, and 240 from that. Okay? All right, so that's uh, the current that we would have out here. And then from that, we could figure out what the uh, apparent power would have to be. And it's always worth remembering that the apparent power from the generator is going to equal the apparent power in the load. So what is that going to be? Well, uh, what's my applied voltage? What's my current? Remember, this is apparent power, not true power. So we just take the 120 volts that we see at the load. We multiply it by the load current, which is 12 amps. And we get 1440 volt amps. Now, again, that's per leg. So the total apparent power in the system is three times that. All right? Great. Now, turn our attention to a slightly different connection to illustrate what's happening here. Now let's go to a delta generator, same exact load. So I'm going to set up my generator in such a way that we're going to get the same kind of result out of here. Here's my three legs on my generator. Here's my point A, B, and C. And like I said, we're going to use the same exact load. In other words, 10 
at an angle of 45. All right, so this is going to be A prime, B prime, C prime, connect A to A, B to B, and C to C. All right, not the prettiest picture in the world. Notice we can't have the fourth lead. Right? There is no corresponding point on the delta connection. So whenever there's a delta out there, you can't do that. So really the YY is the only one that you can do as a four wire. So these are three wire. Now what we're going to do, since this is still going to be 10 at an angle 45, I want to set this up so we get the same kind of uh, effect, right? same result. That would require me back here to create a generator phase voltage. In other words, we'd have to rewire this when we design the generator. It would be wired in such a way that the phase would be 208 volts. All right. Notice that in this configuration, the generator phase voltage equals the line voltage, right? Because it just goes from A to B. It's not going through two of these to get the line. It's just literally the phase voltage is the line voltage. Right, so back here, generator phase was 120. The line was square root of three times that, 208. Right? Here, the generator phase is the line. They're both 208. Okay? All right. Now, how does this translate back into what we see at the load end? Right? What's the load voltage? What's the load phase voltage? Well, you know, both of these systems produce 208 volts right, for a line. So whether you are looking at it this way or this way, you know, from A prime to B prime in both of these, it's 208 volts. And this load is identical. So what does that tell you? This load phase voltage must be the same as what we found up here. In other words, it would be 120, volt, 120 volts. In other words, it would be the line voltage divided by the square root of 3. Right, so when you do that, 208 divided by square root of 3, you get your 120 volts as expected. All right. So this is what we're going to see. We're going to see, depending on the, on the connection, either a current or a voltage is going to be increased by the square root of 3 or it's going to be decreased by a square root of 3. All depends on, on what the configuration looks like. Okay. All right, so... Hey, if, if I have um, 120 volts out here for my load phase, that's what I had over here, then I should wind up with the same uh, load current that I had in the original uh, version over here, right? So what is my load current? Well, that would be my load phase voltage, 120 volts, divided by the impedance value of 10 at 45. And that would work out to... Once again, 12 amps. And um, again, we have the rotation on the phase. Don't worry about that. Um, that's relative to this, right? You know, this phase, if this was zero, this wouldn't work out to 45 relative to this. I'm doing this relative to this voltage. OK. What about the uh, apparent power? So this little expression turns out to be very useful, as you'll see in a moment. So this is going to be, uh, once again, 12 amps times the 120 volts, which is going to get us 1440 VA per leg, as expected. Right? There's one question we haven't uh, answered yet, and that is, what's the generator uh, phase current? What do you think that's going to be? Well, unlike this situation, and it was pretty obvious that the generator phase current, the line current, and the load current are all the same. And over here, yes, the line current and the generator, excuse me, the, uh, the load phase current are going to be the same. So I know that this current, the line current anyway, and this configuration has to equal I load, so that's going to be our 12 amps. 
But what do we wind up with back here? Right? And I know what you're thinking. If you're thinking ahead, you're thinking, oh, there's got to be a square root of 3 in there. Is it a square root of 3 larger than the line current, or is it a square root of 3 smaller? Am I multiplying or am I dividing? Right? So we'll just let you think about that for a minute. Dun, 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 dun. Dun 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 Are you done? Okay. So no big prizes, sorry. What do you think? Here's the clue right there. Generator and phase have to be the same total apparent power. Well, guess what? This is 208 volts. This was volt. This was increased compared to the load by a square root of three, which means its current is going to be decreased by a square root of three. So this is going to be I line divided by square root of three. So I take my 12 amps. I divide that by you know roughly uh, 1.732, and we will wind up with 6.93 amps. And if you multiply. 6.93 amps by 208 volts. You will get the expected 1440 volt amps per leg. Okay? Beautiful. All right, next time what we'll do is uh, we'll look at a delta connection on our loads with uh, Ys and deltas on our generators. Okay? See you then.